A tree is a special type of graph, and it's quite simple to define. It's just a connected graph which has no cycles. So, first of all, maybe we should realize that an acyclic graph is a graph with no cycles. So, a graph with no cycles is acyclic, and a tree is a connected acyclic graph. So that's the definition. And more generally, if we have an acyclic graph which is not connected, then we can call that a forest, which we think of as a collection of trees. So a forest is an acyclic graph. Notice the main difference between a tree and a forest is that a tree has to be connected. In the video on bridges, we learned that a bridge is exactly an edge which is not contained on a cycle in the graph. So what we know from that is now that a tree contains edges that are only bridges. If it had a non-bridge edge, then that br non-bridge edge would lie on a cycle and therefore it would not be a tree. So we have a corollary now. A connected graph is a tree if and only if all of its edges are bridges. So if we think about some examples of trees, maybe we want to first specify the edges, uh, sorry, the vertices. If we think about some examples of trees, we perhaps want to specify which vertices we want to talk about. So if we talk about two vertices, say one, two, then there's a tree like this. Well, that's pretty simple. That's a tree on two vertices. Pretty boring. But if we have three vertices, one, two, three, I can see uh, several different ways of making a tree. Either like this, or like this, or like this. This is 1, 2, and 3. This is 1, 2, and 3. But even though these are three different trees in terms of the labeling, um, these are really isomorphic. These are isomorphic. So there's two ideas here. One idea is to figure out how many trees are there like this on a given set of vertices, and then the other idea is to think about which ones are actually truly distinct, which ones are, because I would call these all the same in terms of isomorphism. So, in fact, we know the answer to this question, so let's first look at the question of knowing the vertex set and seeing how many possible trees there are. And that's called Cayley's formula. It tells us that if we have a vertex set V of n elements, like in this case we had 1, 2, 3 as the vertex set, then there are a total of n to the power of n minus 2 trees on that vertex set. So in this particular example, we have n equals 3, and the total number of trees should be 3 to the power of 3 minus 2, so 3 to the power of 1 gives 3, and that's what we had here. So this tells us that there are certainly many, many, many trees on a given um, set of elements, but when we want to know how many trees are there in terms of isomorphism, then we can take a look at this following table to give us a little bit of... So on only one vertex, we only have one non-isomorphic tree. It's just a single vertex without any edges. With two vertices, we have just the simple path on two vertices. With three vertices, there's only one non-isomorphic tree on the three vertices. These are the three labeled trees on three vertices, but we saw that they're all isomorphic. They're all just a path of length two. So that gives us one non-isomorphic when we have uh, tree when we have three vertices. And it might be good as an exercise to try to find the two non-isomorphic trees of order 4 and find the three non-isomorphic trees of order 5. Of order 6, there are six non-isomorphic trees. And in fact, this number starts to grow quite a lot. By the time we get to just 16 vertices, we already have 19,000 320 non-isomorphic trees. So certainly we don't need to look for all of these right now. But what we could do 
is take a look right here at this case. Let's take a look at the six non-isomorphic trees of order six and perhaps pause the video and see if you can find them and then when you play it again you'll see the answer. Alright, so here they are. These are the six non-isomorphic trees of order six and in fact if you were to try to draw a connected graph on six vertices that has no cycle you are going to get one of these six drawings. Of course your drawing may look slightly different but on, upon inspection you'll find out that it's isomorphic to one of these six drawings. Now in a tree we can see that some vertices have degree higher than one but there's also several vertices which have degree exactly one. So for example in this graph right here we have five vertices of degree one and here we have uh, four vertices of degree one, here we only have three vertices of degree one and down here we only have two vertices of degree one. Now in a tree a vertex of degree one has a special name. It's called a leaf. So let's write this down. If T is a tree and we have a vertex in that tree which has degree one then that vertex is called a leaf. Now the first little corollary we have about, I'll just call this a fact really, about trees is that every tree with at least two vertices has at least two leaves. Here it is, so we have any tree T and the number of vertices of that tree is at least two then that tree will have at least two leaves. And the way to see it is um, quite straightforward. What you do is you just take a maximal path, take a maximal path in T, and now a maximal path in T is a path that cannot be extended using an edge of the graph T to form a path of longer length. So, for example, if we take a look at one of these graphs up here, this path is maximal because there is no edge in the graph T, this particular graph T, that can be added on to this path and make it into a longer path. So, if you take a look at a maximal path, then each of its end vertices has degree 1. Each end vertex of this path has degree 1, so is a leaf. And the reason for that is because we know that there are no more edges which could increase the length of this path and we also know that there are no more edges that would even bring it back to somewhere else in the graph because that would create a cycle. So that means that this has degree 1 and this also has degree 1. And so that works for any tree with at least two vertices. We always know there will be at least two leaves. Okay, so that's it for the introduction to trees. In a later video we'll take a look at more facts about trees.